I'm here with Tom Barber of Chelsea Grin and Darko. How are you going, mate? I'm doing good, man. Happy to be here. This microphone's really cool. I like how long it is. Enjoy it, mate. We, uh, <laughs> it's bigger and better around here at Wall of Sound. It's very interesting. I never had a microphone this long that I had to I could literally hold the base of my chest. And... We'll, we'll try and focus. We'll give you the microphone later. You can play with it after the interview if you like. Yeah, I would. Honestly, if you did that, I would love it. This is, this is so cool. I feel like a <laughs> 1960s talk show host. Well, welcome to The View. Um, we're here with Tom because obviously we're at one of the biggest deathcore death call shows of the year here in Melbourne. Um, obviously, we've got Thy Art Is Murder with the Decade of Hate Tour, Whitechapel, Chelsea Grin and Spite. Um, we pl you played at the Forum last night in Melbourne. Monstrous. How was that? It was actually pretty freaking wild. It was, what, 3,000 cap, um, sold out. Uh, we had a little bit of uh, problems with the, like our electrical stuff the day before, so... Stepping onto the set last night, you know, everything was like, oh crap, we gotta make sure everything's right. And being, I think it's a, the two of four, you don't get a chance to sound check or line check. And the band has been doing that for such a long time. And it's like, so, it's so weird to just right before you go on, like, do everything, because we're just so meticulous and we like things to be, like, you know, in control. And it feels like you're kind of out of control in those moments, but it reminds me of doing, uh, being younger of like when I first started doing the touring circuit and you didn't really have a chance to have that that big space to check your instruments or whatever the hell it is and it's it was it's, it's cool it was hectic at first but last night was just a reminder of why you don't really get to sleep much out here and like you know it's it's cool man it's traveling between all these big these big areas we have to fly to every show so it's like you're so tired but then you go and you see the 3,000 people just wigging the fuck out and you're like, I'm not even tired anymore. I feel really great. And Australia bigger than you thought? Yeah, it's massive, bro. <laughs> never have I ever flown to each show in any place that I've ever been. And it's just, it's just crazy. That's wild. Well, yeah. it might have seemed a bit rushed last night, but you would have never known because the show was absolutely wild. Um, fans were going nuts for it. And, like, you know, for us Melburnians, when we kind of see the forum host, like, you know, some of the big kind of top 40 bands, it's cool and everything because it's a very historical venue. But to see it sell out for a deathcore night is just historical, man. It was cool to be there and see, like, all the architecture. There was, like, all those beautiful, like, sculptures and everything in there. I was like, we're playing metal in here? It was, it was just crazy even, again, playing there with all the beautiful stuff there. But yeah, I agree. I so agree. wild, man. So wild. And last night's set was so good. We got a good mix of the old stuff, the new stuff, bit of Suffer in Hell, Suffer in Heaven. It's just such a great mix. Mm -hmm. I wish we could have played more. I mean, obviously, again, being on the on the two of four, you just like want to play a longer set. We're so used to playing like an hour for everything that we do. So we felt like we had to pick the songs that we believe that people would enjoy. And it's sometimes you play certain songs, you're like, oh man, I wish we could swap them out halfway through. I wish we could play them all. But yeah, it's it's sick, man. We're having the time of our lives. I definitely, last night or the day before was one of the shows that will I'll always remember from my career. And it's like, this shit is crazy to me because, you know, past few years, no one really could get out and do anything. And now that everything's back full swing and everyone, you know, out and, living again it's it's fucking crazy to see the energy just through the roof and people just being gracious to be out again and out at shows and people enjoying this is just it's a blessing man it's great it's so fantastic man it's been a few years since chelsea grin have been here you guys did a headliner a few years ago before covid i know that your set was maybe a bit shorter than you'd have liked maybe chelsea grin need to come and do another headline tour soon oh yeah bring us back invite us back we'll come back we love, <laughs> we love coming back we love everywhere bro it's like Again, music is, it's a, everything everybody can share. You put, if there was such thing as how many languages, like you put 80 people in the room and there's 80 different languages, you whistle happy birthday, everyone's gonna know that melody because music is something everybody can connect to. So it's like, you know, I, I, I why the hell wouldn't we come back? I think everybody has a good time, you know, this package is great and yeah, man, I just, I would come back with anybody. So, yeah. Invite us back, man. If it's okay, oh, I see what's going on. Yeah. Who would um who would you ideally love to tour Australia with? Fuck. I mean, if I could if I like is dream shit or am I like This is like a dream but also like it could come to life kind of a bit of a, you know. Okay. If all right, if I had five bands, I would do it'd be This doesn't sound even possible, but my blue sky. Slipknot, Parkway Drive, uh Whitechapel, Thy Art, you know, I feel like, and then us. I feel like Just, that'd be... No worries, yeah. I think that'd be... 
I think that'd be hectic. Well, we've got Knotfest in a few months. It's our very first Knotfest, and we've got both Parkway Drive and Slipknot. So maybe you just need to jump on the bloody festival. Shit, bro. It's, again, you got to invite, get invited. <laughs> I, would, I would love to do it, man. Just, if the offer was extended, we would be there, you know? Of course, of course. Now, mate, two albums or a double album, whichever way you want to talk about it. Um, fans are going wild, suffering in hell, suffering in heaven. The first album was monstrous. We loved it in 2022. We've just kind of um, stepped into 2023. March is uh, fast approaching and we're getting suffering in heaven. Um, fans loved the first album or the first part of the double album. Mm -hmm. What can we expect in the second? I think it's a bit heavier. Yeah? Um, I think it's more aggressive. Um, we had originally 16 songs and we wanted to put it all on one record. But realistically, it's like if you give everybody all that at once, you know, they're just going to pick through it and, you know, go go about it as they may. But if you separate it into, you know, two halves, granted, it's only eight and eight songs. It's something to really listen to and dissect. And I, we believe the first one is more of like, a, I don't know, kind of like more of a journey. And it's, it's very, there's a bunch of different types of like uh, feelings on the first record. And I believe the second one has that, but it's just more of an ass beater. There's a lot more just like heavy ass parts, there's some crazy vocal parts, it's just, I believe this one's gonna be the one that makes people go, oh, it kind of makes sense why they did eight and eight, because when you put it all together, like it is now, it's gonna be like, oh shit, it's like a journey. Right. It's like, you know, it's something, you know, it's not just a bunch of songs that we just wrote and put together, it's like we pick the certain things to right. put into certain songs and it's, it's just going to make sense when it's all released. So I'm sitting here thinking Suffer in Hell is the crazy heaviest Chelsea Grin album and now you're just going to make me go shit myself with Suffer in Heaven. Well, I maybe. It's, I mean, it's all perspective, but I believe, the, <laughs> I believe the second half, which is look, March 17th, I believe it's going to make people go, oh, okay, this is sick. That's so yeah. good. Yeah. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Now, I do love myself some heavy Tom Barber action, and I'm loving Chelsea Grin, yeah. and I'm really trying to keep it cool, calm, and collected to be sitting with 50% of Darko right now. <laughs> Crazy few years, man. Um, tell me a bit about it. How did the project start up? Uh, we just weren't able to go outside and do anything, you know, because of, you know, fucking COVID, I guess you can call it. And uh, Josh just hit me up, and he's like, let's make music. And I was like, all right. We started to, you know, just do some songs together and just fuck around. And it just turned into something way more serious. And, you know, I put uh, a lot of energy into Darko as well. You know, but it's it's just wild to see how it kind of fucking took off and became its own thing. And now we, you know, we got a bunch of records out and it's only been like a couple years, like two years. And it's crazy. Like, yeah, we just, I don't know, we're just hungry for it. We just putting it out there I'm just happy to do it and it's you know it's fun above all it's fun and in the space of like within a year you've like got two Chelsea Grin albums a Dark OLP um, with Oni which was amazing you've got Death Mask Part 2 mm -hmm. like so much new music it must be such an exciting time for you oh yeah we have another record too we just haven't we're not done with it yet but it's you know we're just consistently putting shit out bro you just know? whatever it's like you know how people put uh, content out well instead of like wasting people's time or as I see, I see as wasting people's time just put out stuff that people can grab onto it's like I get it people want to see what you're doing and what fucking food you're eating and x y and z but I would just rather sharpen my blade the entire time and just put out music because I think music is the best content and you know people get bummed when you're like oh you know this is this reminds me of filler on a record this is this is filler on the record it's like I believe most social media is just filler and I feel like musicians in themselves i think that sh people should step up more and put out more music you know because it's like i love doing it i love making music and I, I feel like i would love to see more of more bands it's like i feel like i wait so long for bands to put stuff out because i love so many different types of artists so i just think about that and i'm like fuck i want to put out more music and even chelsea grant we're writing more music right now and it's just i believe 2023 might be the year for music where people start really fucking grinding again. Well, it's not like, you know, a few years ago where it was like album, two years, album. It's like the whole streaming world has really like changed the game a bit. It's mm. all about consistent material. People want to hear from you. People want to see what you're working on as you've just finished it up. So it's fresh for us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, I, uh, wait and put out more music and we're excited again, put out that record March 17th for Chelsea Grin and other than, you know, Darko. Darko's obviously, like, it's a passion project. It's something I do, but, yeah. I just love making music, dude. There's really no other thing to it. I just, I, 
don't like to exist on the internet because I feel like the internet's not even fucking real. Yeah. And I just feel like, you know, I would just, if I have to be there, I'd rather be showing you what I've been doing, you know, and what I've been creating. What do you get to do with Darko that you don't get to do with Chelsea Grin? Right. Um, kind of more of my, about myself and about my emotions because it's like, Coming in the Chelsea Grin, that's a fucking legacy project, you know, and it's something I walked to in the as a child to the bus stop, hearing that shit as a kid, you know, and now I'm in the fucking band, so I never wanna. It's like a, it's like this thing in your brain. It's like you see something you grew up listening to, and you only want to make sure it does that, but better. And I feel like I'm learning about the Chelsea Grin fan base, and I'm learning about what people enjoy to listen to, and and how they perceive the band. You know, and I want to be seen as as great as Alex was, because you know Alex is fucking OG, one of the best vocalists in the game. You know what I mean? And it's like I need to stay on par with that, so I have this idea of how I see Chelsea Grin. But with Darko, it's like I fucking do whatever I want, and if it works, it works. If it works, it works. And with Chelsea Grin, I'm so much more critical about what I'm doing, vocal placement, what I'm writing about. And Darko's just like, <clears throat> and I fucking go, and I'm like, this is what I'm feeling right now. I'm I'm letting my emotions out on this and I'm just gonna put it out. And you know, again, I feel like it's two different projects because I like it's a tough, I see Chelsea Grant as a legacy project and I'm like, holy shit. Again, I know I've been in the band for a few years but I still see it as me as a kid. And I'm like, oh, this is fucking crazy. I have David, you know, David's an OG member of the band. And it's like, I sitting and down and talking with him every day about like his memories of like, yo, when the band started doing this and that and like, now I'm here. Yeah. On the tail end of well, not the tail end, but the new beginning of Chelsea Grin. You know, obviously, some of the members go, come and go. Yeah. And it's like, are you going to get mad when things change, bro? You can't change this part of life. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that wasn't the case, no one would change their fucking underwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? It's like, life changes. People well, got to see the change in things. It's, it's interesting because North Lane in Australia have undergone a similar process where Marcus Bridge was a new vocalist, came on, but he's now done more um, albums than his predecessor, Adrian. And, you know, you've been in Chelsea Grin for such a long time now that that pressure or sort of crit- criticism that you put on yourself, mm. do you think others are really putting it on you or do you reckon it's just for you? I mean... I've read some gnarly comments being like, you know, blah, 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 you're not like Alex, blah, blah, you know, I, but I've, you know, I've also seen people give me praise. Yeah. So it's like, that's with anything in life. Yeah. If you're not critical, critical about what you're doing, is there a purpose to what you're doing? Is there drive to what you're doing? Mm. Is there a reason to get better? Are you going through life staying in the same lane? It's good mm. to deviate and try other things. You know, life is about seeing all the sights, tasting all the food, yeah. meeting all the people, yeah. um, hearing all the sounds. You know, it's, I believe, again, change is a part of life. And we all need to change as people, musicians, artists, whatever, how the fuck you want to see it. And, you know, it's... Those comments, though, you've got to stay off the internet, Tom. I thought you were giving me advice. Oh, I don't go on the internet. That's what I'm saying. But when you put music out, yeah. obviously, you have no choice. But, like, look, I don't ever really post. Yeah. Because I like to live in the moment. I like to be, as they say, in the now. Yeah. Because I don't want to have to... You know, people take pictures. And they're like, oh, let's take a picture so I can look back on this. Well, instead of like, you know, worrying about looking back on it in the future, why don't you just have it now? Mm. And it's like... Live it now, experience it now. Live it now. Because it's yeah. like, don't get it, don't get it twisted, bro. It's good to think about memories. And it's good to think about that stuff. But I, I feel like more people are thinking about the picture rather than the moment. Mm. And I think... Uh, the evidence, the kind of... Yeah, fuck that shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. dude, everybody eats food. Everybody hangs out with their friends. It's yeah. Like, Look, I'm here with blah, blah, blah. You know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, just live. Yeah, Be enjoy happy. it. Remember yeah. it. Remember it. I love that. Until you get fucking uh, bonked on the head or you get, uh, what's that? Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Then you can't quite remember. Then you need the pictures. Is then, you, that... then you need the pictures. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, my grandma even knows it's your dog. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, back to Darko for a second, man. Um, it's just, you guys have released some top albums and EPs and stuff. And what I want to point out, a lot of fans know this, but like maybe a lot of fans don't. Everything mm. you've done is independent. Like yep. Darko's not on a label. Yep. You don't do PR. Mm. Um, you don't do interviews before an album drops. You yep. like kind of just do your own thing on your own social media, and it's just become from what started as this little project to this massive deathcore beast. Mm-hmm. Um, again, started as fun. It's just me and Josh's money. It's not like we have people loaning us money or a label mo- loaning us money or whatever. And it's like. That's why we only print so much merch, only print so many CDs, and, and you know, you see sometimes people are like bummed that they can't grab something that fast, or but we're, again, the band is growing, and as the band grows, we'll be able to print and do more stuff, so yeah, it is just me and Josh, and 
granted, it is just me and him. It's still just fun to be us because it's. It feels like there's not any other friction to like kind of like bounce ideas off. I was like, is this okay if we do this? Is it okay if I post this? Is it okay if I do this? It's just like I'm fucking doing it. I'm free. Yeah, I'm just doing it. You know? So good. Mm -hmm. What's it like being able to be on tour in Australia in your respective bands to be able to hang out with Josh? Um, I love it. Yeah, you know, it's crazy because it's before we came here, he was like, "Bro, you're about to be in Australia." <laughs> Again, it's been a minute since we've been back here, and it's just cool to... It's like, you want to do things with your friends. Yeah. You want to hang out with your fucking friends. Even yeah. if you're struggling, you want to be with your friends. Yeah. But you want to, if you're doing great, you want to be with your friends. And it's like, yo, I'm playing music. I get to be with my boy and my other boys. It's like, this is probably the best tour I've been on a long time. And even, look, I don't know Thy Art that well. I don't know White Chapel that well. But even from this tour alone, I've had more conversations with them than I've had in my entire career. Yeah, I mean, it's just like I don't. I'm not. I'm not the kind of guy to like reach out and go on the internet and just hit people up because I would rather meet someone face to face. And you know, I meeting them and having a chance to talk to them, I I can see how, you know, like who they are as people, and it's it's crazy because I again I look at them as me being a fucking kid again and. I went up to Philton and I like put my arm on him, and, like, <laughs> like, yoinked him around for a second, and my brain was like, "Dude, this is fucking crazy." <laughs> sweating on my armpit, just thinking about it, and it's like crazy. It's wacky, bro. It's, yeah, it's wacky, so wacky. So good. So now that you've got to experience going on tour with Josh, hmm. when are you guys gonna go on tour together? When are we gonna see a Darko live show? Um, we're planning for a live show. Um, but again, it's gonna be all. Of, we're gonna be putting our money in it. We're gonna try to get like a gnarly lineup. I mean, we're gonna do a thing where. If people can't make it to the show, we're gonna like fly out a handful of people from certain countries. We'll like do like a raffle. That's and sick. If blah 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 is from this country. We're like fine. We'll, we'll buy your tickets. You can come. Yeah. You know, and like get you a flight. So I mean, I don't really see bands doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm not trying to like. Not in our scene, at least, anyway. Nah, I mean, not that I see. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. It's like we want to be able to give this joy that you know we do with music, and it's like. We try to look at it in a fresh perspective and how can we kind of make ourselves like not relevant but let us let the people know that we give a fuck and it's not just like putting out content you know what I mean? absolutely i despise that word yeah anything it's just like bro just make music yeah just make fucking music yeah you know what I'm saying? be creative i love that yeah be creative sounds good and i imagine like the idea of a darko live show is actually quite technical because it's just you two boys and you got like a lot going on there with the drums and the vocals and the programming and like some other stuff so it would be quite a lot to kind of get together right it's figuring out who we would have play it because there's again i'm not acting like darko is like fucking anything beyond anybody else it's a big band. deal man well regardless how you choose to see it it's like <laughs> we have to find the right people to yeah. play the music because it's just of course. hectic bro. of course yeah you know even for me it's like yeah i'm like fuck i'm glad this is like recorded so i can practice it you mm. know like i have months like i do for chelsea grin i have months prior to write to the record and mm. you know same thing for darko i have even more time to write to the record so yeah it's like i'm way more meticulous with it and of course dude it's bouncing back and forth between the two bands it's like Things I learn with Chelsea Grin, I implement with Darko. Things I mm. learn with Darko, I implement to Chelsea Grin, and it's so cool that I can go between the two. And it's like this is this band and this is this band. That's cool. And it's two different things. And just like I'm the one vocalist, but yeah. it's two different fucking sounds, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. Maybe you'll have to get someone like Zach Wilde to fill in. I hear he's doing fill-ins for bands these days. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about <laughs> Not your vibe? No, I don't know if I'd want Zach Wilde. I yeah, mean, fair enough. I mean, he. I mean, he's. You know, I don't, I don't know. I'd want like probably like younger heads, like kids that want to get into the scene, cool, and have talent that don't have like a way in. Give them opportunity. That's what I'm saying. So if we like find the right people and be like, yo, give them a chance, maybe they can go fucking make their band and like love it, man. That's how it should be, you know? It's yeah. like it's like extending the hand to the to yeah, the, the yeah. little pa dudes, paying it forward kind of thing. Straight up, bro. And I feel like that's that. how it should be. How many people are already doing good? It's like, bro, do good. I get it. I like. Let's let everybody do good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying? Let's spread the love. Yeah, I love be. that, man. I love that. Now, before we wind up, I want to share with you a segment that we did with um, Joe Bad, a fit for an autopsy, when he was down here a little while ago. Nice. We like to call it Death Call Karaoke. Oh, um, so what we kind of do is we kind of get the vocalist yourself to um, pick maybe an Aussie tune that's not really Death Corey at all. Maybe it's Kylie Minogue. Maybe it's Men at Work with Down Under. And just give us a little bit of a like, you know, maybe a one or two line with your gnarliest like Death Call voice. Joe Bad did ACDC, if that helps. We've got In Excess. Don't change the thing for me. <laughs> okay. Tom Barber, Death Call Karaoke. Let's go. Don't change! 
make a thing for me. Thank you. We'll take that. Thank you very much. That is uh, Death Call Karaoke uh, Season 5, Episode 3. Yeah. Thanks so much, Tom. We really appreciate you taking the time here with Wall of Sound TV. Have a bit of a chat and um, wish you um, all the best on the rest of the tour. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having us. See you later. <laughs>